In this video we're going to look at the reactions of benzene. So there's two reactions that we need to know for the specification. The first one is known as nitration and the second one is halogenation. We'll just spend a moment discussing what kind of reactions benzene undergoes. So if you remember from the first benzene video, the one about its structure and bonding, this pi electron cloud, this delocalized electron cloud, adds stability to the molecule. And more stable molecules undergo substitution reactions. And because of the pi electron cloud, it's going to be attacked by species that can accept a pair of electrons from this pi electron cloud. And so it is attacked by electrophiles. So the first reaction we'll look at is the nitration of benzene. So you've got the equation here. This is benzene. And when it reacts with nitric acid, and this is normally concentrated nitric acid, it will produce C6H5NO2, so that's nitrobenzene, and water. Now, this won't happen on its own. It needs some help. It needs a catalyst, and the catalyst is concentrated sulfuric acid, and the temperature is about 50 to 55 degrees C, so I'll go 55. So we've got reagents and conditions. You can see the substitution. We've lost a hydrogen from the benzene ring, so it's gone from C6H6 to C6H5, and the hydrogen has been replaced by the NO2 part from the nitric acid. And You'll see when we look at the mechanism in a moment how the water is formed. Um, another key word that we need to use, this type of nitration is called mononitration. Mononitration. And that's basically because one nitro group has substituted with the benzene ring and this ties in nicely with the temperature. If the temperature was higher than 55 degrees C, you run the risk of getting what's called polynitration. So you could end up with something polynitration. So if that's greater than 55 degrees C, now you don't want that because a polynitro compound would look something like this, so it just means there's more than one. So mononitration occurs when the temperature is kept at 55 degrees C. If you have it too hot, then you run the risk of producing a polynitro arene, um, which is potentially explosive go straight into the mechanism for this reaction. This is one of the mechanisms you need to know for the exam. So the first step of the mechanism is the production of the electrophile. And that involves those two concentrated acids. So we've got HNO3, nitric acid, and H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Now this is sometimes collectively known as the nitrating mixture and they will react to form three substances. They'll form the NO2 plus ion, and that is the electrophile. So that's the whole point of this reaction. The other two substances that are formed are the HSO4 minus ion and H2O. So there's the water molecule formed um, already. The second part of the mechanism is known as electrophilic attack. So the whole point, remember, of this first equation is to produce the electrophile. So here it is here. 
This is known as the nitronium ion. I'll write that up in a second. And basically, this is going to accept a pair of electrons from the delocalized electron cloud. So we show that in the mechanism as a curly arrow from the circle, this inner circle here, this pi electron cloud. A pair of electrons will come out and bond with this nitrogen. So the result of this little step here is to generate this intermediate. This is not going to stay like this for very long. I'll just talk about what's happened um, to create this. We've got six electrons in the pi electron cloud. Remember, each carbon has one electron in the, in the p orbital that overlap. And what's happened is two of those electrons have come out and meant that a carbon-nitrogen bond has formed. So effectively, the pair of electrons that have, that have enabled this bond to form, this covalent bond, um, have come from the pi electron cloud. So what I always tell my students is, general rule of thumb, cover five carbons with your partial electron cloud. It looks a bit like a horseshoe. Um, so four electrons involved but you must cover five carbons with it. The positive charge is because effectively um, one, of, one electron has been totally lost from, from this system. This carbon here still has um, ownership, if you like, of its electron that belonged to this pi electron cloud, but one, the other electron is now sort of effectively the nitrogens and so it's, dis it's gone from the system. So it's lost an electron, so you get that positive charge. The hydrogen was always there, effectively, it's just that one there, but we don't show it normally. We're going to use it now because it helps us explain what happens next. Remember I said this is unstable. So to stabilize itself, it basically wants to put a pair of electrons back to reform that pi electron cloud. So obviously we've got positive charge in the middle here, but the electron pair here are negative, and so there'll be an attraction. And effectively, we re-establish the pi electron cloud. So we've got all six electrons back in there, and the NO2 is still attached, but we've lost that H plus there. Now, if you remember, the sulfuric acid's role is as a catalyst, and catalysts need to be reformed, otherwise they are they're used up, and catalysts don't get used up. So we need to reform the catalyst. So hopefully you can see how we're going to do that. We've got an HSO4 minus ion here. We've got an H plus ion here. And if you combine them, you get the H2SO4 back. And hopefully, now you've seen the mechanism, you will appreciate why it's known as electrophilic substitution and just be careful with your spelling too many times as a teacher I see double L there and that will lose you a mark so imagine getting all that mechanism right and then losing a mark because you didn't spell electrophilic right so make sure you don't do that take a look at the halogenation of benzene now so I've written on the board there the overall reaction between benzene and chlorine and again, you can see that mono substitution has taken place. So we've lost a hydrogen, C6H5 now, and we've replaced it with one of the chlorines from the Cl2. There it is there. And the H and the Cl have combined to form HCl. And just as before, this won't happen without some help. So this needs a catalyst, and we've got a choice. We can either use AlCl3 as a catalyst, or FeCl3. And we'll explain the role of the catalyst when we look at the mechanism. As with nitration, we need to make the electrophile first. So here's the equation for that. We've got the catalyst, AlCl3, similarly for FeCl3. 
React that with the chlorine and we get these two ions produced, AlCl4- and the Cl plus ion. And I've obviously underlined this one because that is going to be the electrophile, that is going to be the species that will attack the benzene ring. Just as before, we're going to get a pair of electrons from the pi electron cloud. We're going to be attracted towards the electrophile. The electrophile, remember, is an electron pair acceptor. And that will produce an unstable intermediate. So we'll draw that up now. We'll just put the chlorine here now, just to, so you can see how things work on a on a different carbon rather than the one at the 12 o'clock position. So remember the rule, you must cover five carbons with your um, partial electron cloud and we've got the plus sign in there. So this is the intermediate. It's not very stable, doesn't hang around for long because it wants to become stable and how does it do that? A pair of electrons from this carbon hydrogen bond go back in and re-establish the full pi electron cloud and so we get that and that and then obviously the H comes off as H plus. And finally we need to reform the catalyst otherwise it wouldn't be a catalyst so you can see hopefully we need to make this back well we'll take the AlCl4- minus ion and we'll react it with the H plus ion and we will produce AlCl3 and HCl. And because the mechanism is pretty much identical to the nitration mechanism, it's obviously got the same name, and so this is also electrophilic substitution. Let's finish with this slide. The Overall reaction you can see for chlorine and benzene and bromine and benzene, you can see how similar it is. I've written up there the names of the organic products. We've got chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. And you can see there, this is the one we used um, before the example. So we've got two possible catalysts, AlCl3 or FeCl3. If you were carrying out a reaction between bromine and benzene, your catalyst choice would be AlBr3 or FeBr3. And one thing I didn't mention when I was talking through the mechanism, these catalysts are referred to as halogen carrier catalysts. The reason for that, if you remember the first step of the mechanism to produce the electrophile, you can see here that this has become AlCl4- minus. So it's carrying the halogen from Cl2, but remember, it will eventually give that back up. So you'll get AlCl4- reacting with um, H+, and forming AlCl3 and HCl.